We had another question come in from Lone Gamer 6332 The biggest issue for aspiring comic writers is trying to find an artist. Yeah, finding an artist. Well, I have to mention this in the context of uh, my company, and I'll tell you why. Uh, when I started storyboard graphic novels, I knew I was going to need a roster of really talented artists, but who you know had not only the talent but a good work ethic, and preferably uh, could exist on a pay scale that is not typical for what companies like Marvel and DC pay. Because if I were to offer to my potential clients uh, a, a page rate that Marvel and DC pay to their pros, you know, I, I wouldn't be able to have many clients, right? So what I did, and this could, could be instructive to people looking for artists, is I surveyed the world for artists because in many uh, foreign countries to the US, uh, the exchange rate can be quite favorable so that paying an artist, say in the Philippines, uh, a rate that no American artist could s sustain themselves on could actually sustain a whole family in a foreign country. And the beauty part of this is that there are artists in other countries, Philippines, for example, for some reason, these people have the most amazing eye. They're phenomenal artists. And uh, the page rate that I can offer them so I can offer my clients a reasonable page rate uh, is great for them. So they're very happy. So one thing one can do is look for artists, you know, in Indonesia, Philippines, even like uh, Portugal, Italy. Um, so that can become very important. Uh, you artists in the U.S., you know, are used to a need uh, uh, a higher page rate than you know, a, a person trying to put together their own book uh, may be able to afford. You said something interesting, talent and work ethic. Yeah. Do you find those go together? Not necessarily. There are some wildly talented people who uh, can only produce on a very slow basis. And that doesn't work in my, in any comic book industry, unless, you know, you're just doing a book at your leisure and you don't care if it takes five years to come out. So work ethic is very important. And, you know, I'm currently, for example, producing over a dozen books for people. And I have to monitor this progress every day. And although we don't set, you know, onerous deadlines, there's still deadlines. And so work ethic becomes important if you want to get a book out in, in a reasonable amount of time, yeah. But what if someone says, look, my what I do can't be rushed? Then so be it. I've had people uh, that I've worked with either on my own books or books for clients who ultimately said that and either something was renegotiated or they left the project, yeah. You know, because you can't rush somebody if they can't be rushed. We had another comment come in from Carlos Manns, and Carlos writes, I'm an illustrator slash artist. What I find difficult or what actually makes a difference is having synergy with the writer, parentheses, a good match or flow. There needs to be an underestimated value in co-creation. Doesn't need to be one direction, writing then drawing, but actually can retrofit both ways and improve both parts with creativity and fun, especially in an industry where the money, if any, comes later. Well, that's a very well thought out statement, and I agree with it totally. Um, if there's great synergy between the writer and the artist, uh, that's optimal. And 
an artist can uh, contribute more than just the art. Sometimes, uh, uh, like it's often said that Jack Kirby contributed more than just the art to the early Marvel comics. So, yeah, it's all a synergy, and uh, it, it all depends. Some artists just want to be given a definitive script and write uh, and draw it, okay? Others want to be more proactive, and they have ideas, which are good. And if those ideas can mesh with those of the writer, then it's great. They don't always mesh. It's like it's almost like anything in life. You know, you meet a person, uh, that person has their agenda, you have your agenda, and whether or not it's all going to work, we don't. You don't know until you try it. Sure, sure. And and like a director and their DP or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. And I often tell my clients at Storyboard that the director is the artist. And sometimes a client might want to quote unquote micromanage an artist, which some artists take abrasion to, okay? Um, other clients are more than happy to just let the artist interpret the script as written, okay? Uh, it just seems to me, in my experience in life, and not just in comics and graphic novels, is that everybody's got their own set of ideas on how to do things. You're probably not gonna convince people to go your way, right? But you can work with people, you can compromise and come up with something that everybody likes. Sure, and going back to the cliche saying in film, which is there's the movie you write, there's the movie you film, and then there's the movie that's actually edited and produced. So I'm yeah. sure it's exactly the same with comics. Exactly, exactly. What should a comic book creator look for in an artist? Someone whose vision jives with theirs. In other words, if you, know, you have an idea of what a comic book should look like that you're trying to create. Uh, the, yeah, there has to be some something simpatico with your artist. If the artist draws your character in, say, a comedic way that is not your intent, then it's not going to work. Um, you know, the meeting of minds between an artist and a writer is a very ephemeral thing. Sometimes it works off the bat, sometimes it never works, sometimes they compromise. But, you know, you have to like an artist's work. So, for example, when a screenwriter uh, or a producer or a director gives me a screenplay and I read it and I get a sense of, say, two or three artists who seem uh, appropriate to bring the project to life, what I do is I simply show them samples from the three artists. I say, well, which one do you like? Uh, sometimes, uh, I'd say about a third of my clients, uh, whether they're screenwriters, directors, actors, whatever, uh, they've been reading comic books forever, right? They're big fans. So I simply say to them, whose art do you like? Do you like Alex Ross's art? Do you like Sam Keith's art? Do you like Jay Lee's art? Et cetera, et cetera, Mike Mignola's art. And uh, they say, oh yeah, I really love Mr. X. Well, then that gives me a good clue as to an artist that will please them. Even if I don't think that's exactly the right artist fit for the project, but if, if an artist, if a writer likes a particular artist, I try to find somebody who, you know, is in that wheelhouse for them. And what about temperament? Because that, you know, someone can be great at either writing or art, but if the, if the personality styles differ, do you kind of know that, or maybe that just comes out over time? Lots of times, writers and artists never meet. They have very little contact other than the production of the book. Um, again, everybody's different. Uh, Dan Cody and I are different people. Uh, I can rattle off a number of artists I've worked with, and we're all 
different people, but if you admire and respect that person's talent, that's key.